Hi all, I'd like to share a quick bubble tip for how to build single page application navigation a little bit more easily. Um, so you often have in your bubble apps, if you're building a single page app where you want to sort of load everything on page load and then have this these transitions between like sub pages be really quick, um, you'll set something up where so you click on a side nav button and it, sh it hides whatever group is on the screen and it shows some other group and you'll have conditionals on that group to, to display it and you'll have workflows on these text elements or buttons to, to set those states. Um, and I've seen people use, I used to use this pattern where you would have like text elements and you would have your state on the page be a string and you would look and see if when you click on the button, it would set the, that state to a string. And you know, if that string is page two, for example, you would show page two. Um, and there's an easier way to do this with option sets that I've found not a lot of people use, but I find it makes things a lot faster and easier and more robust to changing and adding pages later. I'll just quickly show you in a minute or two how to do this. So I find that the way people usually do it is you'll have your side nav, say, on the left, and you'll have some text elements. These are just regular text elements. And you'll say, you'll have a conditional to set the color, for example. So here we're setting it to yellow if we're on page two. So you'll say, if this subpage is say, page one, then set the text or the font color to this yellow. Um, so this index subpage, this is just a uh, custom state on the, on the page itself. So we see we have this custom state, which is text. And um, when we uh, set a conditional on this text to say if that custom state is set to page one, which is a string for text, then set its color to this. And the same thing we have over here on our group, like these are like our sub page wrappers, we might think of them as. So page one, page two, and so forth. So we say if the sub page state is set to page one, then this element is visible um, and it's not visible on page load. So by default, every group is hidden. And then when the index's state is set to whatever the string is, then we show it. Um, and then we also have to set a workflow on each text element. So we'll have on text one, we'll say set that state to page one. If we click page two, it sets it to page two and so forth. Um, and so I did this in a whole bunch of apps for a long time and it works sort of fine, but there's a much better way, an easier way to do it, I think, using uh, option sets. So if we go to um, the other version of the page, so this is the exact same functionality over here. Um, but just built in a sort of more streamlined way. What we're doing here is we're creating an option set called subpage. And so instead of a text, we're going to use a, an option set for our, our different pages. Then we create page one, page two, page three, page four in here. Um, I also set an image as part of this, but this is just to sort of uh, make it easier to discern the different pages. This isn't necessary, but... Um, you can see there's a page, there's a display, which is what we're going to use for the side nav, and then there's an image. Um, what we do is we create these, these are our pages, and the, the nice thing about this is if we want to change this later to like info something, then when we reload our page, instead of needing to go through our conditionals, it's here and it still works, which is great, um, which we'll sort of come back to in a minute. But, okay, so the first thing, um, after we create our option set, the next thing to, to do is to create a repeating group in here. And so instead of having these, um, what I'll do here is I'll duplicate this so that we can see the, the alternative structure in the other page. We have a repeating group in here and each cell, so that the data type of the repeating group is going to be subpage as a type of content. Then the data source is just all the subpages. We just create a repeating group. We style a text element however we like it. Um, the text element will be the current cell's subpage display. So in our option set, this display that's this here. This is like the, the default attribute. Um, every option set entry has a display. So that's what we're going to use. We could call it page name or something. We could, you know, this could be, um, we could have a new attribute called something like page name. And this would be text. And then we could set, for example, the page name to be info or something like that, um, but not necessary. Um, so I'll get rid of that. I just use display typically. Um, Oh yeah, so we set the, the content, the text content to be the current pages um, display, or sorry, the current options display. And then we have a conditional that says if the subpage is the current cells subpage. So um, on index, instead of a text custom state now, we have a subpage custom state. And the default value, we can set it to page one, page four, and so on and so forth. Um, the nice thing about this is when we go to um, reference, if we later want to have a, a conditional, say on, a, let's say an image, um, there's a good way to do this. Let's say for some reason you have a, an image that only ever shows on page two, but it's not connected to the, the display 
oh, sorry, it's not connected to the option set necessarily. What you can do is something like you can say if index's subpage is um, whatever page, the nice thing is here is you see the options that you've defined. So for example, if you have somewhere in your app, if you have info lowercase and info uppercase, um, and you're using this um, more standard method of using strings to reference for your conditionals, you won't have these options. So you just, you might make a mistake with typos or things. This is really nice in that it just shows you what all your options are. Well, it's kind of a secondary benefit, but um, yeah. So once you do this, um, this here, right now I've typed this in manually, but you could just say, what you could do is say indexes, um, subpages, display, that'll work too. Um, so now it'll say info, you load page two instead of page two, right? So this is great. So anyway, that's basically it. You set um, a workflow on this. Um, not sure if I covered this step. You set the a single workflow to say set the indexes subpage to the current cell subpage. You set a conditional on your um, your text to say if it's if the indexes subpage is the, it's the same basically the same conditional as your workflow, uh, roughly speaking. You set the font color, and then the same thing on your wrapper group. So you have a wrapper around each page, like page one, page two, and if the um, here we're saying if the subpage is info, then which is page two, then we show this this page two wrapper. Um, so in my experience, this simplifies things a lot when you're when you're building side navs or top navs. So uh, yeah, try it out. Let me know if you uh, find this useful and uh, have fun building.